Um, Frank Sullivan, there aren't so many health stories in the papers today, but there is an interesting one which um, Aileen O'Mara has done in the Sunday Business Post, look, investigating the stories behind stories of GPs earning an awful lot of money from the uh, general medical uh, s- uh, scheme. Yeah, I think this is a very good piece. I think it comes on the heels of a number of pieces that were... Uh, broadcasts are published during the week uh, on the GMS earnings. That's the medical card payments from the government or from the HSE to GPs. And when they, when you publish a list like that, uh, at the top of the list, there are some big numbers. But what I think Alien does is uh, points out very nicely that that's a little bit misleading when you see the services that are being provided um, in return for that money. And I, I, I'm a hospital-based consultant, but I have to say, I think the GPs are the absolute unsung heroes of the health service. In do you this think country. so? Why do you no say question. that? I mean, they're delivering a huge amount of care in, at a very with very little overhead, sometimes no overhead, um, out in the community. If the GPs weren't as good as they are at doing what they do, there'd be an awful lot of people showing up in hospitals that uh, into overcrowded hospitals that we can't deal with anyway. So the GPs, I think, do a huge... They work extremely hard, by and large. They have a, a very heavy workload. They have very little safety net uh, to, to work with in the community. And they're a classic example of uh, doing something with very little overhead. So when you look at something that says they get... A, a, a practice million gets, or so, whatever, a yes. A million euro. Well, it turns out that, and 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 those who who know these practices would tell you, there might be four or five or six doctors in that practice. There might be doctors' assistants and uh, nursing um, uh, support and, and various other practice uh, supports that are absolutely essential to take care of those patients. When you divide that million by, you know, six, eight, or ten full-term equivalents looking after these people, it doesn't seem like a whole lot of money at all. And how are things at Galway but University? But that uh, wouldn't be their only income, though. They well, would have income from the uh, private patients as true. well. I so didn't know. Suggest in this that case, the they're saying million that euros goes six ways doesn't fully state the no, income. In, of in this case, in the case cited, I think in Alien O'Mara's piece, the particular GPs are principally working in yeah. in the public sector. They don't necessarily have a big private se- sector because they're a lot of their patients are on the medical card scheme. That's my understanding yeah. of the article. The, 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 the kind of inference you get when you read, uh, 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 you know, that a doctor is making and the doctor's name is put beside that million euro. It looks to the uninformed that uh, oh, there's that doctor, you know, creaming a hundred uh, a million euro off the state at a time when we're... And that's far from the case. Yeah, certain practices will have a split of public and private practice and uh, that's not to say what... what uh, some doctors will be earning overall. But I think it's misleading if you look at this and say, oh, well, all GPs are making a million euro. And Frank there. Sullivan, what about Galway University Hospital? Because you worked for many years in the States and you returned uh, to become Professor of Radiation Oncology with Galway University Hospital. Are you finding now that already your resources are being stretched because of the current, cu- current cutbacks and obviously future cu- cutbacks as well by the HSE? Very much so. Uh, I think, you know, Galway University Hospital and other hospitals like it around the country are, are working hard to try and deal with a huge volume of business that's coming our way with really not a lot of capacity to take care of it. And these problems are getting worse, not better. And I think we're seeing cutbacks, we're seeing wards being closed, we're seeing patients staying longer in the emergency rooms overnight, we're seeing theatre lists being cancelled. There, there are surgeons in, in our hospital that turn up to work, but they can't uh, operate because there's no theatre uh, available to them. Because the, the only way the HSE has in managing some of these costs, cost problems, is to, is to cut clinical cost. services. You know, about two, it's the same thing. Because like can't cut pay. Well, yeah. three quarters of the HSE's budget are fixed. They can do nothing about it. And that, that's, that the cost to, to the HSE is pay um, uh, and, and pensions that they really can do nothing about. So the only lever they have to well, move they could cut pay. this... Well, and it's well, probably well, going to be cut pay uh, cuts absolutely. in the public sector but, as a whole. But currently, that hasn't happened. There's yeah. the, the only lever that has been moved is to dial down clinical services because that's the only part of the needle they can move. And so Galway is is the hospital is choked with patients. There, there we we have uh, far too many people coming into the beds that we have available to us. Um, now, the, the doctors and nurses, I, I think, do a very credible job. I'm not just saying that because I'm one of them, but I think the, the doctors do the best they can under the circumstances. But, I mean, with the cutbacks that are coming and the budget, uh, the McCarthy re- yes. report recommendations, we're in for a very, very difficult time in the next couple of years.